All righty, let's do it. Post France World Cup final loss. You can tell that I was crying, but enough time has passed. And, uh, you know, losing to Argentina is messy. It's, 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 it's uh, a lot different than losing to Germany or Italy. Uh, there's no way I'd be able to do a reading, but I love Argentina. I love Messi. So, yeah, they're one of the best, if not the best sporting event ever, one of them. So, that's life. Part of life is moving on, as we know. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's sports, and um, it's it's uh, it is what it is. So let's dive right in. Where's my psychic crystal? I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do a reading tonight, but I'm pretty relaxed. I'm pretty like I was very sad. You know, but like you know, they deserved it, and like there's, I, I just have so many Argentinian followers, and they're so happy, and and it's just like they needed this, and it's just a beautiful thing. The astrology aligned to, I saw, I I saw some, or I I I looked, at, I did a little deep dive into kind of the the timing of the game, um, the moon being conjunct. The beautiful fixed star speaker, and then I looked at Messi's chart, and he has speaker on the midheaven. I'm just like astrology. I should have known, but I also did intuitively know uh, at the start of the competition. I, I told my dad that France was going to lose in the final to Brazil. It was Argentina. I also was going to go to France, but intuitively on Monday I said I think we're going to lose. I and then I, you know, so I just I'm happy I didn't go. Let's just say, um, so they have to save save the money and time and hassle and all that there. So yeah, let's uh, that's that's my debrief. So let's kind of uh, so I have I have you initials. That's just what I'm doing now. So let's share the screen. So what do we have here? <clears throat> my voice. If it sounds down, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, um, it's less about sadness. It's more about <laughs> just like having, and now I've kind of regained my energy, but like, yeah, just, oh my God, the, the emotions and, and just, 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 uh, heart, heart, heart beating and, the ups and downs and it's just the craziest game ever. So but yeah, I think I think uh I'm pretty good at gauging my energy and uh when I do readings like this where I'm like not you know like 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 I I always will will go go in and start and I'll know very quickly like if I just need to just hit quit. You know and I look at your chart. I actually stare at it for like, I usually don't look at charts at all. Like I usually just like, like open and that's it. That's the first time I've seen it, you know, since besides like when I inputted it. But with yours, because I was just like, like, you know, watching the show, talking about the game. I just kind of was like looking at your chart for longer, you know. So that's, that's, that's a, a very rare thing. So um yeah, we got a Sag, <clears throat> Sag Sun obviously, in the tenth house of my uh, whole signs. You have a twenty-two degree Pisces rising, so that's a that's a difficult degree. Um, that presents you know challenges, and um, we'll get into that. And then you have a Cancer Moon, so you've got you know a Water Moon and a Water Ascendant, which is very compl complimentary. Um. <clears throat> basically like you know your moon is 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 what's uh not really seen by others and um when it matches your ascendant which is what is seen by others right it's your outer personality 
um, you know, it's not an, a trine, but it's 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 an elemental trine, meaning that they're in the same element. They're two, they're sister sister signs, Pisces and, and Cancer. So um, basically, like it's kind of like the energy of like what you see is what you get. You know, um, there's not this big disparity between how you look, how you act and your core emotional being and needs and stuff like that which a lot of people struggle with like i was just doing a chart last night of someone who had i can't remember all the all the signs but basically it was a very it was like a very um it was a pisces moon and the taurus rising and a leo sun so yeah it was like a very you know i was like you know telling her like people probably like don't see that side of you that that really deep i see inside so for you it's kind of the opposite here <clears throat> so the moon in terms of aspects just has a square to saturn um and mars in opposition to mars and the square with uh jupiter which is in, you know the crazy one the big one the saturn one the sun, we're only dealing with the opposition of Chiron. One second. My girlfriend's in. One second. I probably have to go let her in. Okay, give me two seconds. Well, I'm going to keep talking as I... One second. Okay. So I just want to make sure I didn't have anything like super personal because my WhatsApp just got shared. But I was like, okay, everything's all good. So um, yeah, with and then you get North Node and Leo. And you got some Scorpio energy, uh, Venus and Mercury. So let's kind of talk. Okay, so 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 the Sag, Sun, Moon, and Cancer, Pisces rising, right? How's it all kind of play together? Well, you on one hand, um, you know, you have the Fire Sun. So um, one way that Jupiter. You know, Jupiter rules um, Sag, right? And also, co I mean, in ancient astrology, traditional astrology, it ruled Pisces as well. So even though they're square signs, they, you know, and I'm a Pisces Sag, so, you know, it's something we have in common, but my son is Pisces, my moon Sag, so they, 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 they can kind of bond on that, but it's very different. But basically, this is like a, you know, it's, it's a similar energy that I myself go through personally, uh, which is that water and fire split in your chart. So, um, yeah, it's it's difficult. Um, one second. Okay. Wait, what was that sound? Just went to my microphone. Hold on. Double check that. Okay, micro, micro, micro. Let me test it. Okay, it should be. Oh, where it is? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, we're good. So anyways, um yeah, so 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 um that 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 split is definitely around um you know one around one side being way more out there, you could say, right? Way more extroverted, way more um you know, Sagittarius is all about exploration, it's all about adventure, it's all about getting higher wisdom, um, traveling obviously. Uh, I think of the Sag as, as the truth seeker. You know, it's it's a higher mind. It's, it's 
how, how you how you blend everything to create a uh, a truth um you know and then and then sages are you know very yeah they're very very, very philosophical and very and they, have, they have a very adventure spirit and they, they just you know they, they go through life um as a, they see life as a series of adventures and they're like it's like this this uh this this uh it's like the gypsy archetype the archetype of like the gypsy you know just does a bunch of stuff travels a lot goes all over tries new things but then from their from those experiences uh transforms in to um the teacher who then transforms into the philosopher so that's kind of the energy there so with the um what is it a no it's not you know, with the moon being cancer, it's way different. Um, one quick second. Hold on. Okay. So, you know, with with the moon in cancer. And um, you know, that's that's clearly obviously all about the home life, but it's in the house of Leo. So, you know, that's 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 uh, another dimension. But basically <clears throat> there is one part that wants to go, 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 go. And then there's another part that's way more of a homebody, you know. Uh of course having an exalt uh, indignity moon, meaning that the moon works you know, the moving the emotions and, you know, how you live within yourself and um, just kind of your inner environment, right? Like uh, what makes you feel secure? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel safe? Those types of things. So that being in cancer is um, very at odds with Sag. So with that kind of split, it's, you know, it comes down to, okay, how can, how can you feed both mouths? <clears throat> so the cancer mouth is, is, you know, the one, it, it needs lots of, you know, emotional nurturance. It's very attached to the family. So sometimes uh, it can be difficult to like separate from like the mother. Very, very close relations in that respect, in that realm. Um, but then the Sag is like, it wants to just explore and just, you know, see everything, do everything. So, you know, the key, I think one of the keys is, is, is balancing that out. Um, and, you know, having having a really good, good balance between adventure, growth, expansion, wisdom, and just grounded energy, you know, grounded, like family, home life energy. Of course, also having a moon in Cancer, you know, it's very good. It it, it puts one, uh, it makes them very able to meet their emotional needs, of course. So um, that's why it's I don't like saying best placement, but why it's the uh, you know the dignity placement is that the moon, uh, you know, it's all energy. So um, the Cancer moon is able to shake things off or not shake things off it's 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 able to just handle things when they come you know like like some like like something happens the cancer moon it's like you know how animals kind of shake and stuff like like when like after they get in fights they shake it off that's like kind of a cancer moon like it it, it it will cry it'll let it'll let the emotional debris out and you know have conversations about emotions but like one thing also is that you know, they're so sensitive that, um, you know, oftentimes if they're hurt, they, it's like the whole metaphor of the crab falling back into the shell and not being willing to trust and um, kind of shutting down from, from, from the earth, kind of hibernation energy. So then we say, okay, Pisces, 22 degrees, well, 
you know, Pisces risings are are chameleons. They they go with the flow. They um are able to yeah just blend in and and just in in terms of just life in general they they tend to just be very um yeah very mutable very well, it's a mutable sign but yeah very just um th th there's a real dreaminess a real real empathy that really matches with the moon in cancer uh they they appear like physically very like um there's like a mystical kind of look that they have um and yeah they 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 just they they had this this like um yeah very dreamy external so and then the, the planet that rules your chart, Neptune, is on an angle on the midheaven, you see? So that makes it so, you know, your career, you're probably someone who's who's a healer in some type of way, or who's meant to be, or at least doing doing something that's very, you know, related to Neptune, which is, you know, compassion, the arts, um, yeah, helping others um anything related to imagination creativity and that being connected to the midheaven which is on the galactic center makes me really think okay this you, you know very high likelihood that your dharma or your you know your career is really really um meant to be in, in a domain of spirituality so back to the pisces rising so it it will make someone you know typically more shy but then sad sun is like the opposite of shy right and even though it's not in the same sign it does conjunct uranus so that adds like kind of an Aquarian vibe to you um, where, you know, it's very, very uh, individualistic, very unique, um, rebellious. If, you know, just, just wants to do things their own way and wants to kind of find themselves in their own, in their own way. Right. Not, not following like the societal conditioning, um, you know, really, really, really unique like that. So, let me just look at one thing really quick. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, that's good. Okay, cool. So anyways, um, yeah, so with the, the, tw the 22 degree thing though, um, that's you know it's 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 I'm not like someone who goes really deep into degree theory, but for twenty two degrees, you know it's it's a, a tough one. Um, it kind of and you have a Capricorn Mars already, so it's which squares uh Saturn. So you have, you have a T square between um, Moon, Saturn, Mars, Saturn and the apex. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but yeah, I mean, I I would just see it as a theme in your life of um, you know, having to overcome obstacles, which you know things with this kind of chart where there's Saturn implicated in the way it is, get a lot easier after the return. You know, twenty nine and a half years old around that time. Um, but yeah. I I would say that with you know with, with that with 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 that rising that you know there there would be also potential for issues of boundaries. Um, you know, any Pisces rising like can be like the type of person that really id like can really idolizes. You know, like like they 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 can really like like um be a little susceptible to to um 
energy vampires, you know, people who who might kind of come off in a seductive type manner, but might not be the best people. And because there's so much compassion, being a Cancer moon, Pisces rising, there can be that tendency to give in um, and have relationships where, whether it's friendships, romantic relationships, partnerships of any kind, that you feel like your boundaries are crossed. And, there, and there's a, another issue of identity. Um, you know, it's often the case that that uh, and it squares Neptune. Yeah, so exactly. So that there's uh, identity crisis at some point in life. Um, kind of Neptune squaring the ascendant in Pisces can make it very unclear to that individual, especially when young, who they are. Like they can really, lots of fog kind of in the way of, uh, you know, between them and, and really understanding um, and seeing themselves clearly. So the cure to it, cure to it, obviously, is the fact that Neptune, you know, which your Neptune is exactly on the moon. That's interesting. Um, is 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 related to your career. So people who have this typically like they they almost feel like it's not like they they feel like they don't have a choice, but they just feel like so drawn towards helping others. Um. But this is the thing when we when we mix it with your karma, you know, with with the North Node in Leo, South Node in Aquarius, opposite of me, by the way, exact degree, which is crazy. Oh, my, or is it been fourteen or fifteen? I think it's fourteen. It's fourteen, right? Yeah, fourteen. Yeah. So that's a huge synchronicity between us already. Um, because it's like basically who I, what comes easy to me is where you're trying to get, but then what comes easy easy to you is where, where I'm trying to get, right? right? So with that, though, there can be issues with um, kind of accepting praise and, and issues with, um, you know, kind of like allowing yourself to, to shine, right, in different areas of life. Um, and with a South Node in Aquarius in the 12th, you know, there's, there's, you know, a guarantee it squares Mercury. Okay. Got it. And Chiron. So there's definitely some past life pain, some residue from past lives, um, that's left over, but you definitely, you know, very humanitarian soul, someone who it really comes easy for you to just help you know but also it comes easy for you to just understand kind of the zeitgeist the underpinnings of society which also the neptune on the midheaven is great for that as well and um yeah so so then we talk about this you know the the the, the the whole Leo thing, Leo is about authentic self-expression, right? So I talked to a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of my clients have this, right? Where it's like they have a, the, the opposite nodes as me, right? That's, that's kind of like, it's just, it's just the karma, right? Um, what pulls, it probably is, it's probably what pulled you to me with the fact that you're, you're, you're Neptune's on my, my moon, right? Which um, basically, means that by me speaking to you, I open up your, your Neptune, which is your chart ruler in a, in a sense, not that I open on the sole factor of opening it up, just that it, I speak to that, 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 that part. So, um, you know, and the high, high Neptune, I see uh, integration is about seeing yourself clearly. And, and the, the best, like I said, the best way to, to do that is through being a service and kind acts, you know, and um, selfless acts, and that has this magical effect that enables a person to 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 really like kind of through through the service, 
see themselves. But then there's this also this aspect of the Leo North Node in the six, where it's like through, you know, allowing yourself to to take praise, you know, allowing yourself to to express yourself and to have fun, right? Like not be so kind of just that di digested by the needs of others and of of humanity and of helping and this and that. But by allowing yourself to um, to be creative, you know that's that's a huge a huge part. And then it's in the six, so it's like there's another energy there where there could be a passive tendency that you're trying to overwrite of being the dreamer that doesn't accomplish, you know, has all these these great plans, but then doesn't actually put them into use. So you're really being pushed. In a creative direction um and there's elements of your chart like your mars and capricorn that are are, are, are are could be very useful to that um <clears throat> but with okay we're, let's see so 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 then so then the south node right which once again is the, the past life tendency the kind of been there done that and north node is the 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 metaphoric mountain never climbed um so the pat so so that when when it, when when it's squared right any angle between the south and another planet that represents a skipped karmic step so with Chiron um you know it's it's definitely relating to uh past life pain and in the third house Chiron in Taurus you know it's it's about self worth and and feeling like you can speak your mind, speak your truth, it's like throat chakra work, right? But also it's 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 like throat in 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 the root, I guess you'd say. Um, feeling grounded within your own body. There can be some people who have this. They 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 can like have issues with. Um thinking they're beautiful or, or, or something along those lines, you know? Um, and they can be very kind of removed from their bodies. So things like yoga, right, could be very beneficial, just as, as an example. Now, let me just see one thing. Okay. So... There's a lot of water energy in this chart. Um, one sec. So yeah, lots of lots of um, water energy in the chart. Um, you know, the Venus and, and the Mercury and Scorpio too. And then we got some Earth. Thank God, the grounding force. But um, before I get to that, I want to just speak about, you know, the other square to the south node, which is um, Mercury, and it's an exact one. Now, that is about something related to, to um, the mental function. Perhaps, you know, like, it, and I, I always think of it as, like, interject from a psychological perspective right which is like the the messages you tell yourself this you know potential self-limiting beliefs you might have about you know what you can do and, and, and who you are and all that stuff um and those can really get in the way and they can also be like faulty faulty um Faulty, ah, faulty, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Just tendencies around the mind, right? Um, so, like rigid thinking or just like uh, lacking of discrimination. Um Yeah, so 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 basically, like, there's a big need to kind of like look look within, um, 
and, and, and kind of see, and see things clearly and you lack air in your chart. So that's another issue, right? Breath work would be very beneficial for you. It's weird. A lot of times when I say that people miss, like when we do follow, the follow-ups, oh wait, you, wait, I'm not sure if you have a follow-up. I was assigned between your chart and another chart. And then I signed yours and stare at yours for a while. And then I forgot which one of you got a follow-up when you didn't. If you didn't, you're welcome to have, give you, uh, most people do the follow up with the current astrology after getting this one, and I give you a, a very, very good price for the combination. Or if you just want to do the follow up, um, follow up is just only talking about this nail chart. Current astrology, uh, and it's you know, live session is um, where we start with the one hour follow up. We go over all this, we compare all this to your lived experience, and we, we, we take it a step further. And then we go right into the current astrology, which is like the year ahead for you, the astrological weather, really, really what you need to know about to, 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 to attack this year in the best way possible to understand what energies are present, which energies are coming, just to know. It's like a weather report for the soul. This is the book of the life. That's that's the, that reading is the current chapter, and I encourage clients to get that every year. But I don't like push them to like if they message me, they message me. It's up to them. Um. So more with this, you know, it's that these internalized messages, right? Like the interjects, which can be very, very critical. They can really undermine the strength of the personality. There can be like um yeah like like internalized guilt or shame and also it can be like just communication issues in general like trusting the opinions of other people lying um you know stuff like that right uh or just being really really conditioned in a sense to where you're very far from the nature of the truth um, you know, you can see people in today's world who are so brainwashed, right? Where it has profound, a, a profound impact on on their reality, you know, because they're living in a mirage. And um, so for you to be a sad son in this life, it makes me think, okay, well, maybe there was some past life conditioning that is very common, by the way. I see that in a lot of charts. But yeah, it, it kept you away from the truth. In this life, you're really looking for the truth and to, to really grow spiritually. Um, but also really, really to grow creatively, you know, North Node and Leo. And to, to have like more stability, you know, to, to, to have uh, consistency, grounding, all that stuff, all that Virgo stuff, you know, the, the routine, the health, the diet. Um, also pets, you know, can be very healing so especially when when the north is in leo and you're trying to like kind of get in touch with your inner child more having pets is like the best thing one of the best things possible so if you don't have pets obviously you know i'm all about the cats but i love dogs too um i just if dogs were like lower maintenance like if like dogs are like as low maintenance as cats I for sure have like two dogs for sure. Yeah. Or, or just one dog. Yeah. Just one dog, one dog and three, I already have three cats, like having two dogs and three cats is kind of heavy, but I guess they're low maintenance. It matters much. Well, wow, it's cool how doing this reading has completely like, I can, I haven't thought about the world cup once. Crazy. Maybe I'll do more. I don't know. Who knows? But it's just like my mind is just, it's just completely on the astrology, which is really amazing. What a channel or what a, um, you know, outlet. So back to what we were saying. Um, which direction do I want to go? Yeah. So, okay. Mercury and Venus in Scorpio, ninth house. That's all about the same energy of finding the truth. You know, 
diving deep, deep dives, right? Um, deep, deep dives. Um, someone who is definitely very, very, I don't want to say we're deep again, but I'm going to, who, or not, someone who, who is just profound in the sense that like small talk might be, you might be allergic to it. Like actually, you know, you, you, you really, prefer the depth you know the water the depth um not that you're like always serious all the time you're a sag sag is the, the sign of you know of you know of funny and sense of humor and all this all this uh can be extravagant as well but yeah like kind of balancing the two is interesting you know the water and the fire um You know, which is, it's, it's, yeah, like I said before earlier, like it's being in touch with your emotions. Uh, but then also understand that, like, you need to, to get out in the world and you need to do things, you know. But yeah, okay. So the Scorpio energy in the ninth, um, ninth house is Sagittarius house. So Mercury. Okay, Venus, nice. Yeah, so so the Venus is very well aspected at zero degrees in in in, in uh, Scorpio. So a zero degree planet is kind of a new energy, so there can be a little bit of naivete, uh, newness, and it, it you know it's it's about self love. Scorpio and Venus can 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 they can be a little bit hard themselves. Um, you know when it comes to to to, to relationships. Um, there's this whole theme of power and and you know the, the low vibe Scorpio um has to evolve right into someone who isn't controlling who isn't um like like the low vibe of Scorpio Venus is 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 very much about like being so afraid that like that's like they, like it can be it, it's just like lots of intensity in that in 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 that area of life and and. In, in both areas, in the area of self love, and in the area of of uh, relationships, but they're both completely intertwined because it's well aspected. Um, you know, has a nice sextile with, with Mars, and it's zero degrees. You know, I, I go back to this whole energy vampire thing, right? Um, now, and. I I I would say that that, that that yeah, just early lessons in love and even you know, it, it trends the moon as well. Um so that's really, really nice actually. Um elemental grand trine between ascendant moon and the Scorpio planets and Mercury and Venus. So like it's not by angles, but it's, you know, you can see that it is, you know, water, water, water for the six personal planets. So they work kind of in the tandem, those four, right? Um, and, you know, the, 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 the Venus in, in Scorpio just, uh, they love really intensely. So they kind of, they kind of have to understand that not everyone is going to be like that i guess you could say right um now because mars has a nice little sextile it does make things easier um and i'm gonna go back to camera mode for a little bit i like to show my face you know it's kind of dark in here but i prefer it that way let's see my brightness turned up I did turn some lights on but i guess that's kind of not as bright as usual. One sec, I'm gonna. Uh, it's so bright this night. Hmm. What should you should turn? Yeah, I'm gonna turn this light on. One second. But yeah. So the Scorpio Venus. Um. The Scorpio Venus. Just has to watch out for for for, for you know they have, they have to understand that that. Not everyone is going to to share that that energy of just like like uh, 
just boom, you know, just like the the instant kind of like uh, attraction and 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 just like like soul kind of soul like like very very romantic, but there can be lots of drama in the relationships. And the key evolutionary goal is it's around letting letting go of control, right? Um, letting go of the need to control and the need to it's about is it you know any um, scorpio placements in general are about death rebirth and transformation and, and i think you, your chart went away for saying, your vertex is on your descendants so like you know you, your doorway to, hire, to, to higher like overall awareness is through relationships actually but it's the relationships that ground you right that, that provide you the sense of of um like god i wish english was a there's a word I can think of like not because like boring is obviously a horrible like like not boring stable but not predictable you see there's like there's negative connotations of these words right like but there is some of that like um knowing like that solidity that's that's that, that that's in there right and that really is very 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 you know good for you and yeah so it, it it is really with the scorpio venus about kind of letting go of of just yeah just just letting go of, of the need to 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 um because like, there can be such a like when it's not integrated right but like i said it it isn't so harshly aspected but there's other aspects we'll get into um because and, and it could have to do with like the pisces I see Neptunian fog, which can be like the identity crisis, that potential, right? It's not, I mean, no, you know, nothing's sure, but like it's it's it's, it's common with, with this this uh, alignment. It can just make it so it's difficult, you know, to 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 kind of see it themselves clearly, and then in relationships, it it um you know if you don't see yourself clearly and firmly. And you're not rooted in your purpose and your mission, you know, because it's kind of Pisces can kind of just be like Pisces rising is like here, then there, then here, then there. Um, you know, it can be difficult to to maintain like a high self esteem, where if you have a high self esteem, you know, you can have this like fear that the person's going to leave you or whatever, which then that's when the Scorpio Venus can be very very possessive. So when it gets past that and it just lets go and just um, transforms and, and matures and and grows in that way, that's when, um, you know, it becomes a very powerful placement where, you know, there can be very uh, passionate relationships. Um, it's the, you know, but, but it's not for everyone. That's, that's what's important for the Scorpio Venus people to know is that it's not everyone – it's not it's not like it's it's not everyone that's going to be able to handle that intensity you know and and um even though sag your sun sign is all about um freedom and, and spontaneity like you know a cancer moon um you know wants that closeness and that security so yeah um but yeah the the, the mars venus sextile like it's like a blend of charm and uh, I guess like assertiveness, and it can make someone like it's also like you know linked to, like a high sex you know high sex drive, good good like good for that part of part of life. But being able to like be gentle and strong at the same time in like a way that's not like like very well balanced, right? Those two. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, what else about about this energy? Um, yeah, the fact that it, it it's it's trying the moon is just like, and Mercury's trying the moon too. Is that it? Just adds to this, like makes one it makes you very intuitive, you know. Um, makes you very intuitive and um, able to to really gain a lot of of information, you know, when you're when you're able to ground yourself from who knows where just comes to you and also adds like a bunch of emotional kind of optimism 
right? Uh, yeah, it definitely adds optimism to the emotions for sure. And um, kind of like a, yeah, it, 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 a Cancer Moon is a very warm person already, you know? Um, but it, it even adds to that. And it can make someone a very, a very, very good healer, a very good nurturer. And having series, the asteroid of nurturance in Cancer as well, triples down on that, right? Um, you know, someone who 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 likes to nurture nurture others by, in and, and also feel nurtured by others. Um, you know, through their emotional displays, right? But also with that placement, the ability to nurture is really linked with your um, the relationship you had with your mother, which we'll we'll, talk, we'll see because there's that square with Saturn. We'll, we'll see in a sec. Um. So yeah, if you had like a very like loving relationship with your mother, then it's it's uh it, it's it really really uh plays out in life but if not then there can be you know codependency and, and some of the stuff i've been talking about the low scorpio um also venus in the ninth house you it, it just adds more of an urge to understand the world and different cultures you might uh date someone and being a sad yourself uh or marry someone or whatever from a different culture um, it's very good for like higher education as well. Uh, and just overall good for like, you know, for, for, for just learning, you know, for, for, for higher learning. Right. And your Mercury's there too. So it's the mind Mercury's the mind communication. So there's a love, love for finding truth, like wisdom like this. And then you have Uranus there, which is common astrologer's chart, um, which will give you like more like, a a belief system. That's a little bit, that's not like, necessarily very conventional it's very very much rooted in your own individuality um yeah so that's nice um so yeah just just um find, finding that that self-love but like i want to okay no i'll talk about this first i'll talk about the libra helpfulness okay so so then there's the mercury right um the mercury I guess I should say a little bit, uh, a, f a few other good things about Scorpio Venus is that, you know, once that, that, that point is reached, um, that evolutionary point, right. That's when, you know, the individual is really able to, um, what's the word? They're really able to find like, 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 it's like, like a Scorpio relationship, right. A Scorpio Venus relationship is one that is intense but it's transformational so you're able to really really transform through your 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 romantic relationships and it boosts your your your, your view of yourself and your and ultimately your understanding of truth in the world because you're looking for romantically you're attracted to, to people who can help expand your expand your world right going back to the whole thing about depth so speaking further on that, Mercury in Pisces in Scorpio. Now that is a very interesting one because that one is all about someone who likes to dig deep, like a probing mind, you know, the researcher mind, right? Um and it is opposite Chiron. So that is an interesting one, right? Um, because Chiron it could it, and they they're all square the nodes. Remember? Like how those are the two that were square the nodes. So it's very karmic. All this stuff is very karmic. Um, but, you know, a lot of times there's like feelings of, of intellectual uh, inadequacy associated with this, 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 this opposition, uh, you know, believing that other people might be better than you, usually at a younger age. And this is like a one degree exact opposition. Um, but like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's about, Speaking about your emotions, you know, um, which is what, you know, Mercury and Scorpio likes, you know, sh should do. But sometimes they, you know, it's difficult to open up to, you know, they're, they're not like just going to open up to anyone. Right. But then the sad sun part is just like, 
that's uh, curious to hear if you have a follow up uh, how that plays out in your life. But um, yeah, like you know, facing your pain, speaking about it, you can become like a spokesperson almost for other people. Um, and it's it's you know any Chiron, uh, you know in the chart, you know in this and also being able to speak about your pain is helping out your karma and it's linked to your north node you see so it's this is a, a very important aspect in your chart higher on opposite mercury um because it's actually through that that you're able to you know create that that strong self-esteem which is the chiron in, in in taurus issue right uh embodiment of self acceptance of self um mixed up you know matched with the um the depth of the scorpio of the scorpio um and the reason you have a scorpio mercury in this lifetime is because uh like i said in past life there's most likely and uh, you know is most likely something where you didn't look deep enough you know you, there's the conditioning element even though it's told house should be very karmic but I, I i think of it more as like unresolved or not unresolved like like unrealized dreams and things like that you know like 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 think 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 of the person who has all the best ideas but they don't follow through you know as i said earlier so one second I'm adjusting something so yeah um But yeah, it all ties back to that 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 rulership, you know, be, you know the the mid heaven um, Neptune, right? Just uh, really wanting to to be a teacher, um, and 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 grow spiritually, but also in terms of your 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 view, you know, your 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 higher mind. What is you know, like what what is truth? You know, what is higher truth that wants to be done through career? But yeah, um, so that's very huge. So so being able to speak speak the emotions, um, is is ultimately um helping you achieve that north node goal of like I said, um, get you know like getting to the objectives, and being in touch with the inner child. Um and and uh, you know um, get my words mixed up here. Uh, uh, authentic self-expression, right? Creative purpose. So having a creative, a creative um, outlet is is very, very uh, healing for you. And it can it can be something that you know that could, that's your job, honestly. You know that that plays into into your everyday life routine. So forward. Um, Forward, forward, forward. So, yeah, uh, Mercury in Scorpio, like, deep, deep, deep. And then we also have to speak about, um, you know, the fact that it trines the moon. Um, that makes someone really able to communicate through their feelings. And it actually, or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? That sentence. It makes someone able to communicate their feelings, which is very important to what, everything I just said, right? Um, and they can do this with ease, um, because there's that connection between the mind and the emotions. So, but then there's that whole thing with the Scorpio and or the the you know the Cancer and vulnerability, and. I'm going to get to, 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 to this next piece of the cosmic puzzle in a second with the Libra and the thing I just saw. Before, I probably should talk about Mars first, but I'll just, just take a little sidestep and do that. But yeah, um, yeah, it adds lots of charm also. Um, definitely someone who can get their way can be a little manipulative. Um, but it's really amazing for like, uh, like let's say sales is a random example uh, or any kind of career that involves um, 
and not like in a vindic like in in a, in a bad way, right? But like anything that involves appealing people through it gives the gift of gab to really be able to touch people emotionally through your through your communication, um, and being able to make decisions uh, based on both the mind and the heart, you know. So that's really good. So then, okay. So going back to the thing about boundaries, I think that might be locked in my room. So going back to the thing about boundaries, right? The Pisces rising, twenty-two degrees. Cat, Mika, someone? No, no cats. Um, you know, always watching out for the energy vampire types in relationships. Um, but then when you add black and Lilith, right, in the eighth, um, the Pluto, Juno, wow, lots in the eighth. I see it as, you, you know, you at your lowest, having issues with people pleasing, um, with pointing others above yourself, and ultimately, you're being asked in this lifetime to be to be a little not selfish, but but to put yourself first. You know, you 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 put your you put others before you so much that it's sidelined your personal creative authentic authentic development. So that's very important. And um you know Yeah, also getting like entangled in other people's business, stuff like that, you know, um, like being focused on things that have nothing to do with you and, and people pleasing and just so the, the, the gift is that it brings it, it, it can be very unconscious. It can it can just be like you at your lowest vibe. Um, so understand that is where, you know, things can, can, can happen. But then another aspect too is codependency. And like I said, boundaries, like letting people in, uh, being, you know, relationship obsessed uh, with the Scorpio Venus, as I said, like they can just be so like, like this is like everything and move really, really fast. They really need to learn to kind of chill out, you know, in relationships and just let things flow as they do. Um, but like I said, it's very well aspected. So. Mm -hmm. oh, really not that bad though. I used to have like this weird twitch in my eye where I like every she said like I would just be like all the time and then she like went away. Like so random. Anyways, um yeah, so so that's a little a little detour. We'll we'll, we'll get to that eighth house in a little bit. Um so then there's Mars and Capricorn. So this is a very nice saving grace to your chart. Um, it does square Saturn. So you, you know, that's no, another indicator of like when the Saturn return came, that being, you know, massive or having, you know, what was a massive time because what, what, and there's so many successful people that have this, this square, right? It's because it, it really like, Mars is your action orientedness. So Mars and Capricorn is super powerful, right? Capricorn's all about success, business, like like forward movement that's consistent, right? So Mars and Capricorn, boom, like like mega powerful eleventh house, being able to like do that within groups. But then Saturn would push back that process until you know around thirty, or or at least add lots of restrictions as to you and your like large life goals. However, if those life goals are you know, in tune with the Neptune, you know, on the midheaven kind of compassion, then they don't get blocked, right? It's just more like, like, uh, but like, then at the same time, it's like, you're meant to be like, like a healer, but you're also really meant to, to shine. So, so maybe an artist, you know, artist is very possible. Like, um, cause like, usually I would say like, you know, like if you're doing anything that's like egoic then you get blocked but for you it's the opposite it's like you're allowed to do that stuff it's not allowed is the wrong word which i'm precise in my words here if you're scorpio mercury um but you know it, it, it's it's 
you know, the car, the karma is not showing that that was, that was overused. So, yeah, so, so basically, um, it's kind of like two, one step forward, two steps back, and then the siren turn comes, that energy goes away, and you're left with like this amazing determinist determination. Um, and it, it can be also this like contradiction, contradiction between like wanting to push forward and this one part of you that holds you back, right? Which eighth house Saturn. Should I get into it now? Um, but it's all about like developing, you know, also like a, a very controlled, consistent energy level. And that gives someone that great success potential. Like, the list of, of 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 highly successful people that have this, even in my own clients that have this, that are very successful people. Uh, of course, success is a very subjective word. I have a whole chapter about, you know, called what is success in my book, which is on Amazon, which I make three dollars for each time one sold. So, what Pisces lived on life, you're interested. But basically, um, yeah. Once the the Saturn turn comes, that energy is unleashed, or it's made a lot easier. And the Capricorns, like, I was asked recently, you know, if there's one thing you could change in your chart, what would it be? I think it was like the IG Live or something, or maybe me and Haley. Haley's the at my Moon Girl readings. We, it was, I think it was uh, during the, one of our lives or one of my solo lives, and I was, you know, struggling. I was like, you know. I really do honestly love every part of my chart of, of my, of my chart, my personal plants, you know, the big six, which is like sun, moon, ascendant and Venus, uh, Mars, Mercury. But then I was like, if I was forced to make one change, it would probably be like to have some earth in there. Maybe like switch up that Mar, you know, either the Venus or Mars and Aquarius for, I mean, no, no, it, it, it was, even though I love my Mars and Aquarius, it was like, if I had to, maybe I'm not changing the rising. I'm not changing the Pisces, um, uh, sun, Kazemi, Mercury. Uh, I'm not changing the Sag moon. That's for damn sure. And, you know, I would change the Aqua Venus, but then it's like Cat Venus it's not that good so yeah my default was like okay if i have to do it i'll ch ch change my aquarius mars for a cat mars why would i say that because mars and capricorn people get shit done you know they 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 they, they accomplish they know what it takes to get their their desires met and their goals met and they have this very like i said methodical manner i always say like real estate you know it takes time right like the capricorn people can really kill it in real estate cancer moon also you know cancer rules the homes so with career you know like that's another like potential even though i'm saying that they're like neptune is very big you know on your midheaven and, and, and the galactic center is on your midheaven so i'd be very surprised if there wasn't something related to spirituality but you know you have a a mid heaven in, in Sag that could give you two careers. Um, yeah, just really ambitious is Mars and Capricorn. Um, they can be almost domineering if they're threatened. Um, they're just go getters and they don't give up for shit. That's what I respect a lot. Uh, and it's conjunct your mid heaven, different sign, but yeah, it's conjuncted. So, uh, it gives you this mega power towards career and towards, 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 uh, you know, accomplishing your goals and especially now you're passionate and turn i imagine that that's that's ha that that you know you've you've done a lot I'd be very curious to know how that's unfolded and you know like i said 22 degree pisces rising you you, you overcame a lot for sure you definitely overcame a lot for sure um on many different levels on that on that you know self-esteem level how you see yourself but there's more. Um, so next we look. Okay, so I already talked about vertex being on the ascendant. Vertex being the ball closer. Show me to play catch. 
You see, he brings me this ball and I throw it. I'll show you. Go, Felix. Uh, goes down the stairs and he comes and brings it back. It's really cute. You see, he's already back. Look at this. And the psychic, my psychic told me he's a dog in a past life. He acts like such a dog. Good boy, good dog. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. So I spoke. I spoke on the Uranus in the ninth, right? Just like how it gives like the kind of like unusual original philosophies. Someone who would, if they had like kind of you know or like any kind of like orthodox religion pushed on them, they would just really want to break out. Um, they, they could also like have like, you know, like study abroad, um, you know, want to learn lots, just really, really open to lots of different philosophies and, and, and just really like, uh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I love, I love, I love that place in figuring this. I really, really do. I think it gives a very flexible and open mind, and especially for your chart as a Sag. It's, it's very, very good because it, it'll push away some of the potential low vibe Sag, which is like the dogmatism, like my philosophy is the only philosophy kind of vibe. Um, that is a energy drink called hell the worst name ever but it's the best and uh, I drink them sometimes not often just sometimes Anyways, um, so also another thing about Mars and Eleventh though, it can bring quarrels with friends. Um, like it can bring the urge to make many friends and be in many groups, but then it can also bring kind of like an aggressive energy, dominating energy, a wish to impose yourself in. These environments, so something to watch out for too. Um, but it's also yeah, it's also good for for someone who's just like, you know, really wants to go out and 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 make those connections for networking. So okay, so yeah, we 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 talked a lot about love. Um, just the need for 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 uh, you know grounding. A grounding person, you'll discover a lot through your relationships. Your Juno. Actually, before I get to that, I even talk about like uh the the Moon square Saturn. So that's a very, that's your most difficult um aspect. How many degrees? One degree. So yeah, it's less than a degree separating. So this is a tough one. As a Cancer Moon having. Saturn square moon. This is another strong of why your Saturn return would have just been the biggest opening up for you, right? Might as well finish this thing. Because a lot of people with moon square Saturn, there's this feeling of like it, it can it can be very linked to like depression, uh, like melancholy, especially if there's like like identity stuff going on. Um, you know, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy. Um, really like lack of self esteem. And squares always, you know, the whole point of squares is is that you know there's tension and they're meant to be you know become superpowers, right? But um, it's all about learning to to truly value yourself and see yourself clearly, as I've talked about before. That's where you when you you find your self confidence through that, right? But yeah, it can be really like lots of like like discontent and insecurity, um, and just like this difficult battle to 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 gain that self esteem, you know, see themselves in a positive light, and um, you know, it also restricts emotional it it restricts the emotions, right? So with the T square, with with Mars, uh, Saturn, and the Moon, it it um. Uh, it, it's like an arrow, right? 90 degree, 90 degree, and it shoots out uh, into Aries. Now, um, second house Aries is about self-esteem, right? It's about um, 
Mm. It's about assertiveness. It's about it's about action. It's about pioneering. It's about it's about personal power, like third chakra. You know, just I can do it. Energy, right? Um, being a sag, that you know, being the whole just being a sag helps with that. It's fire sign. Um, but like you know, this 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 is like relating to like, um. Yeah, yeah, like I said, like the third the third chakra here, right? Where it's where um you know, Aries is about identity. Aries see themselves very clearly, right? It's it's so it's really about um taking risks. Right? Risks that can lead to a deeper sense of self worth, right? Trying new things healthy risks um and just finding courage to speak out as i said before to really speak about uh you know any kind of emotional pain which is like therapy could be so massive with this right it can be like completely linked to the highest potential karma um so when we look further at the fact that they, the saturn's in the eighth house right we're like all right well um, you know, it's in Libra, so you can have like long lasting relationships and, 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 uh, friendships and, and, uh, you know, business partnerships, all that friendship. When I said friendships, I meant like BFF, like, like just really, really close ones. But eighth house Saturn is interesting because it can, it can, um, make one feel very overwhelmed by intimacy. Um, and restricted kind of their sexual expression. And also, Eighth House is about, Eighth House of Scorpio, so it's about like the occult esoteric, it's about the death rebirth transformation. So it can actually make people fear kind of like going into that area of life. But that's actually where, you know, you know probing, like, and that, but that's where your Mercury, your mind loves going to those areas, right? So I'm, I'm also curious about how that works out. But, um, you know, it, it can just kind of make one feel really really afraid of like true true intimacy and um it's actually through their search into like the deeper realms of reality right um that a lot of this can open up um but and another thing about Saturday Night house is that after the sound return it can give one like a very like a uh, serious approach to studying the esoteric, right? Um, but it's not necessarily a bad placement. Um, I mean, there are there are difficult aspects though, so yeah, it, it is pretty difficult. But um, it does make someone live a long life. Life is extended. Saturn extends the life. But yeah, like um, I'd say like it, it can create issues with uh sex and 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 intimate relationships. It can like block sex, um, and make issues around that. Um, but then when it when it when it's when it's not you know when it's integrated, it can you know or not blocked or whatever. It can you know indicate steady sexual encounters inside stable relationships right um another area of the eighth house is other people's money so loans bank all that stuff um it's probably better to just stay at, don't take credit card debt like really just be like don't do that right um yeah, just really don't create debt. Like, trust me. Um, it's not like, like just do not create debt. Um Yeah, and usually people with this like will die in their old age old ages of natural causes. Um but you do have to watch out for bone problems. So that's just one thing. Um what else? Uh, and because the eighth house, 
No, what else do I want to say? Yeah, so th so this back to sad return, that's usually a very difficult period of time. Um where you really have to face fears. But ultimately, you know, you're you're really learning how to let go. That's that's what it boils down to, you know. Um and that rebirth, you know, with the Scorpio energy I talked about. So the best remedy is, you know, it's, it's all about just ex accepting change. And that the Pisces rising really helps with that. And Sag, Sag Sun also helps with that, you know. But being, yeah, being open to like surrender within relationships, right? Um, understand that finances are not the most important thing in life, you know. Um, also learning a huge thing for North Node Leo is learning to accept help and to learn, learning to accept they can have problems with like like accepting gifts and things like that um also you know learning to cherish the delays is a part of a complex procedure and not as an obstacle right it's part of the, the grand plan and just like yeah not taking things so seriously it's like eighth and twelfth house saturn just like you know yeah and having spiritual protection is also very very important too um, with your black moon load there. So, yeah. Um, but then Jupiter in the eighth is like kind of opposite of all the energy in Libra. So that actually gives like a, you know, makes someone very diplomatic. They want to, you know, it, it's good for relationships, but you have to watch out the codependency or just like, like being too obsessed with them. But someone who's like very concerned with justice, diplomacy, um, and cat's back. But in the eighth house, it actually makes it, it, it can kind of push away some of the energy I said about the debt, the debt, um, where you can actually benefit from other people's money. So it, it, they kind of cancel each other out a little bit, or they can both kind of um, play out in different ways at different periods in life. Um, yeah, eighth house, uh, Jupiter can a lot of times be linked to inheritances and, and or marrying rich, stuff like that. Pluto in the eighth. Um, mm, no, let's talk about this first. So yeah, Juno, that's like marriage. You know what you're really, really looking for in a mate. Um, so you know Juno in the eighth house. You know in Libra wants heat. Two things, they want that real, real depth, right? And they want peace. You know, they want, they want, they want fairness. They want tranquility. They want peace in relationships, but they also, you know, they want that, that deep transformation, but they don't want just this back and forth craziness. So then Pluto in the eighth, very important planet, very, very important planet. Um, that one is very interesting. And how do I explain this? It's about like really challenging identity, needs, talents, resources, right? Um, and it's this deep confrontation with um, you know who you really are and who you're really not, basically. And there's a dilemma that's rooted between the ego and soul's desires, right? Which can become locked in this crazy struggle. Um, because the soul wants that deep empowerment expansion, right? Through like new knowledge, your chart is like all about. And, you know, also new ways, you know, um, new, new ways to, to kind of relate to others and the world in general. But then the ego is about you know wanting security through things that are familial right like uh so like the comfort zone the cocoon so um that battle you know so 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 it's like yes yeah, so you can it speaks to kind of like defend itself in its own comfort zone from the power to transform and there's this past life 
theme of power and powerlessness and back and forth between that. And there's also this theme of attraction repulsion in relationships, like real polarities. Um, and intimacy can become very, very obsessive. And it creates very intense relationships, as I've already noted with Venus and Scorpio. So this adds to that. And then Juno there adds that too. And Black Moon Lilith and Eighth House also adds that, you know. But, um, you know, part of fortune being there, it definitely kind of just says that, like, the highest manifestation of Libra, which is just like not being a people pleaser, being someone who is the diplomat, who sees all sides of the story, all sides of the equation, who has that balance, but but doesn't like, you know, put people for themselves um, and has very, very loving and caring relationships. That's, you know, you at your best. And then also when you're, you know, diving into the realms of the esoteric, um, that's you at your best. And, and when you're in these, these deep relationships, it's you at your best. So you and your flow state, as you could say. Um, Okay, talk about that. Okay. Let's finish the reading with my camera on. So, okay, so then Vertex in Virgo, that's like your higher, higher, doorway, higher, higher, doorway to higher awareness, I already said, is through relationships, but also through service and through consistency in your, in your daily life, which your North Node in Sixth House is showing. I need to have structure. Um, then there's the fact that you're uh, going to you know, the four asteroids I talked about. I talked about Juno. I talked about, about Ceres. Well, then there's Vesta and Pallas, right? Um, I guess Chiron is technically an asteroid, but I think of more as a planet. So with Pallas in Aries, in the second house, Pallas is like the third eye right so that is a very very fast intellect you know new ideas they come in quick um hey Esme. and um yeah someone like someone who can just like put ideas into action quickly and then second house you know it's it's very good for you know uh handling money honestly and uh, acquiring money through like very kind of creative schemes. So that that's nice to have that there. Um, and then Vesta is in your seventh house. So that that in Virgo. So you're someone who, you know, there's a lot of focus. A lot, you know, Vesta is, is is more like kind of like Saturn energy, a little bit different. Um, dedication, service, all that stuff. Um. What does it? Yeah. Yeah, like like it's about work, but like areas where you're like less resistant to work. Um here's the little baby cancer. Pisces rising, like you. Here's both how Pisces rising. Look at her how her Pisces rising little face is with Neptune. Um so yeah, that's the in uh what was I saying? I was saying the seventh house. Yeah, just someone who like works very hard, focuses a lot on, on their relationships, partnerships. They're dedicated to working on themselves and on their relationships. But uh they can become too fixated. So there's that, that codependency potential on you know, too fixated on one person. And then Vesta and Virgo you know, having a Capricorn Mars and Vesta and Virgo, I mean I, I I don't see like too many signs of perfectionism, but there could be that. I mean, Scorpio can be very perfectionist too. So you have to watch out for that, that kind of like a hundred or zero energy um, and allow yourself to know that you're never going to be perfect. Um, and also it, it can just be like someone who just like works really, really hard and expects like the same, especially like in partnerships, business partnerships, stuff like that from other people. And, and yeah, it can be a little bit of a control freak. No, but the, you know, being a Sag Sun, Pisces rising, Cancer Moon, I wouldn't pin that as like a big, 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 big concern, the control freak thing. Um, but like definitely need needing to like avoid being um, you know, overly critical. Um 
but yeah, it makes you really able to create, you know, very productive routines, which is a huge part of your North Node journey. Uh, okay. So another thing about the, the Neptune, where it is in 10th house, uh, is that, you know, of course I said like service through profession, but there can also be like, um, some people feel like they have to like make some kind of sacrifice for their chosen career. Like say, say that you like, uh, you you become a healer of some sort, but like, I don't know, like, like you, you, uh, and it's not just career, it's Dharma, right? Overall big life purpose. So there, there's some level of sacrifice there. Right. Um, but like, because there's Leo North nodes, like you are also meant to shine in your career. So but it could be as a career is some type of healer. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what stars. If there's any stars that are important to your asteroids. Am I actually gonna stay? Oh my god. I'm so proud of myself. Somehow like the France lost, like I'm like been like begging myself, like, can you please do readings that are ninety minutes? Like just try. Like just make it like like figure out a way. Make it ninety, not two hours and uh i'm pretty close to 90 right now it's pretty damn proud okay let's see what we got so we have um okay so i'm just gonna note these in my head i'm gonna note these in my head So, okay, that's one. I have like a lot of like asterisks at this stand in the computer. I see. Okay. Nothing there. The devil. So you might in a partner suits. Yeah, like uh, it kind of goes with with your chart. Like really, like seek uh, a truth. Someone who's a truth seeker as well. Okay. Oh my god, I can literally there's like so many crammed together. It's so weird. Yeah. Zero, six, seven. That's you.
this one out. A22. Both the Scorpio ones. 14. Oh, I see. Okay, good. Is that all? No, there's one more. Get rid of this. Okay, that's it. So very so you could be someone who's very seductive through your voice. Um, also is really able to embody uh, the inner child. And then and then and then and then and then so you go back to that I need to leave some of these ashes and stars like literally I'll show you I'm just gonna share the screen to show you what I'm looking at. So just so you know. I'm trying to see the degrees. Look at how I'm trying to like look at this and decipher what the hell like each one means. And then it kind of says here, but it doesn't go all the way down. The headache, but I think I, I, I got it. Um, so Quar is the one who for sure is the closest. Wait. Oh, wait, twenty seven. Yeah, okay, that's right. So, okay, so, okay, so with Quar, um, It is um, about indigo children with psychic abilities. So it's very significant to have that in your chart where it is conjunction Mercury because you can literally be a healer. Um, you know, a very, very gifted healer. Um, very creative. And um, it can be the, it, it's your Mercury, and it can be the mark of a genius, because it's like this very out of the box creativity, right? To have it on your Mercury is super fascinating. So that's that. Um,
being able to I guess you could say um express your inner child because a uh, child is, is, is yeah is on mercury um that kind of inner innocence so the pure raw kind of untouched parts so that's 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 that that's something like that goes with the, the chiron as something that can be activated. But then we see Lilith right on your son. So that is like the woman in the man's world who is not backed down from shit. It's linked to feminism a lot, but if you actually think about like 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 what that might infer, it's not saying that you're a feminist necessarily. It's saying that you're someone that doesn't put up with shit. You know, it's 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 the it's it's the rebellion. It's a very you know, it's it's a woman that rebels. You know, they're not with the bullshit. They're not a woman to be fucked with. If you know what I'm saying. Then you have lust on your and yeah and the love on, yeah astral love, not Bible love on the sun. So like just uh very powerful, very 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 powerful. I I like I really really like that place too. Can be happy. <laughs> weird. A weird guy. Um lust on Neptune. Neptune, like what the fuck did I even do? I don't know. I don't want to look at asteroids or other planets like that. And yeah, it's not even that close. How far is that one? Two degrees. So Markab's okay. So you have Markab rising. Now that is a difficult one on your ascendant in Pisces. Um, it can make one very headstrong. Uh, and rash. Um, like stubborn, also like unwilling to kind of change. Um, but it also, you know, it gives, you know, is all it can also give honor, uh, honor, riches, and all that fortune, all that. But then there's, there's, you know, that 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 kind of, um more dangerous side, the more Mars side. Um, good for intelligence, for sure. Like intellectual alertness. To watch out for injuries to your hands. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then Nemesis is on your Mars, but it's like kind of two degrees away. So it's not like, I mean, with an asteroid like that, I would, I would. I'd say that works. Um, the asteroids, like the names, are pretty straightforward, like into into the meaning, right? Like, uh, it definitely, kind of isn't that hard to imagine. What, like, what does Nemesis mean? So. It's kind of like where you meet your enemies, you know? And it's conjunct your Mars. 
So it can create rivals, right? And um, it goes back to that theme. Many themes. Boundaries. Pick and choose very carefully who you exchange your energy with. What groups you join. And um, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> what else can I possibly say? Yeah. So yeah, like it can it can create like a hard time dealing with enemies and and adversaries and stuff like that. So. So yeah, that is about it. Um. One quick second. Okay, yeah, I just want to check one thing. So yeah, let me know about that other reading. There's so much I covered here. Um. I. I'm very grateful for astrology to temporarily remove me from my my uh, football misery. But it's been a pleasure. And yeah, let me know um, about doing the follow-up in the current astrology. I highly recommend it. Unless it's like a... I, I always say unless it's a financial issue, which I completely understand. Tough times for lots of people. Or if it's that you don't like me... Uh, you know, teach their own for astrologers. Or if you're, you know, you're someone who's very advanced in astrology and, um, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh my God. Because in your email, you said facing fears of loss. Yeah. So, so that's another, another thing, right? Where it's like, um, like that eighth house is really, it's really like, um, because Saturn's in the eighth, it tends to extend the person's life so that they might be, have to like really learn a lot about death and experience it. And I'm not saying that in a scary way, like someone's going to die. It's just like usually Saturn eighth house people live longer. So they, you know, experience deaths. Um, being center stage, we talked about that. You know, um, best ways to express my gifts that I'm still unpacking. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, we can talk more about those specifics in the follow-up. But um, with the moon and the fifth, there is that emotional need to express oneself in an authentic manner. Um, and it really is endless. So I really have to get to know you better. But, like, the, the, I think the galactic center, you know, which is just, like, that, that, that just massive spiritual just like downloads like something related to spirituality i think is 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 where i would lean towards but um you know there's also you know the, the, the with the mars and capricorn right like that that's that could be very good for business for any kind of business but like like something where you're healing but you're able to kind of like also step up and, and, and allow yourself to, 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 to be a leader, you know, in some sense. Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely do a follow-up to kind of like zoom in more on, on, on this aspect because it's a, it's a long conversation. A follow-up in current or just a follow-up. Um, Cause I kind of have to know like your, like to answer the last part of that, I kind of have to know, you know, more of your story, I guess. But yeah, the Galactic Center, huge. So, anyways, that's it. Thank you so much. Chat. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. I do not think so. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure. Ciao, ciao. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye.